Welcome to Broadway Church Online. We're so glad you've joined us on this beautiful summer weekend. My name is Vic, and you've joined us on week four of our You Asked For It sermon series. Pastor Simon will be sharing a great message with us in just a moment, but before we continue, I would love for you to hit the like button on this video as it helps spread what God is doing here at Broadway Church. And if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please do so today. In just a few moments, the worship team is going to come and lead us in a few songs, but before that happens, why don't you check out these videos? All right, class, we're ready to begin our first assignment. Everyone take out your notebooks. Psst, Noah, I don't have a notebook. Do you have one I could borrow? Thank you. You're also gonna need a pencil and an eraser before we get started. Psst, Noah, I don't have a pencil and eraser. Do you have one I could borrow? Thank you. Thank you. And class, you're gonna need a ruler, glue stick, crayons, scissors, highlighter, paint, pen, your pencil case, a sharpener, a binder, and your water bottles. stuff. Could you hook me up? Simon, you should have been more prepared. Thanks, bud. You're absolutely right. Helping students get prepared and go back to school with everything that they need to succeed is no small task. Parents all across our community will be gearing up this August to help make sure their children are ready for another school year. And this is so important because helping a child to succeed at school not only affects their education, but their sense of self-worth and their entire future. Over the last four years, because of your generosity, we have been able to support hundreds of families and thousands of children through our annual City Reach Back to School Blast. Each year, this event went far beyond backpacks and impacted so many families. And this summer, we have an amazing opportunity to do it again and support 1,000 children get back to school with a blast through our City Reach Back to School campaign. On Saturday, August 20th, we will be hosting our Back to School Blast event in not one, not two, but three different locations in our community and distributing 1,000 backpacks full of supplies to children across our region. The reason that we can host this annual event has always been because of you and the generous support of our community. And our goal this year is to raise $30,000, which is going to support 1,000 children. And we need your help to do it. Each $30 donation will supply an elementary student with a quality backpack full of supplies plus attendance to the Back to School Blast event, where they will enjoy a free and fun afternoon featuring a barbecue, carnival games, treats, bouncy castles, special guests, professional photographers, and even free haircuts. It's going to be a memorable and impactful experience that these children and their parents are not going to forget. And you might be thinking that August 20th is a long way off, but our fundraising campaign starts now. You can support this initiative throughout July and August by making a donation online at cityreach.org slash donate. Or for our Broadway church family, you can use any of your regular giving methods, making sure to mark your donation as back to school. For more information, 
to sign up as a volunteer for the event, or if you have any questions, visit our website at cityreach.org slash back to school to connect with our team. Let's make this an event to remember and help 1,000 local students in our communities get back to school with a blast. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Desiree and I am one of the pastors here. And as you guys can see, today we have a very special guest with us. So why don't you tell us who you are and what your job is around here? Hi, my name is Camila and I don't have a job here. I'm just a normal kid who comes here every Sunday, but I love to act, I love art, and I love building Lego. Wait a second, are you part of the kids camp that's gonna be happening this week at the church? Actually, yes I am, and we're all set to go. I have my camp shirt, and we're all asking for your prayers for our leaders and kids to keep them all safe during this big event. And also, if you happen to be free this week, we are looking for volunteers to help us, even if it's for just one day. If you happen to be free, you can talk to Pastor Megan. We have a ton of stuff happening here at Broadway for you and your family. So why don't you check these things out? We have now started our fundraising campaign for Back to School Blast. On August 20th, we will be providing 1,000 children, most coming from families who rely on our food hampers, with backpacks filled with school supplies. For years, we have relied on your generosity and your support, and this year, we are asking for your help again to donate. Cost is $30 per backpack, and you can sponsor one or sponsor more. There are 1,000 children super excited for their backpacks, so can you help us make this possible? Please visit our website, cityreach.org slash back to school. And thanks to your generosity, we are at 22% of our fundraising goal. That means that 220 out of 1,000 backpacks have been sponsored so far. Today's a great day to make a donation, if you haven't yet, to help us reach our goal. Our annual summer youth camp is back. And if you're in grades 8 to 12, you do not want to miss out on this year's ARC 1 youth camp. We will be getting away for the whole week, spending time in cabins, on the lake, playing games, winning prizes. We're gonna have chapel services and we're gonna spend time around the fire and so much more. The cost is $375 and you can register at the Automated Giving Center or online. If cost is an issue, please email nathanp at broadwaychurch.com. If you're in grades five to eight, we are so excited to invite you to preteen camp this year. Join us for a week full of fun, games, connecting with others, and three fun day trips to the Extreme Air Park, bowling, and laser tag. The cost is $100 and the camp is from July 18th to the 22nd, this upcoming week from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. each day. To register or for more details, you can go to bway.ca slash preteens. You Asked For It is our summer sermon series where we tackle your questions. But did you know that we offer a midweek small group to discuss our Yaffe message from that week? It's called Yaffe Talks. And if you're looking for a good coffee, good conversation with good friends, we would love to have you join us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. at the Vancouver campus in room 105. I'm gonna be there and you can sign up on our website and drop-ins are welcome. If you had made the decision to follow Jesus and have not taken the next step of being baptized in water, we would love to help you take this important next step. Our next baptisms will take place on Sunday, July 31st of all of our campuses. To sign up and for more information, check out our website or email us. If you miss anything that we said, you can visit our website, broadwaychurch.com, for more information on all of our ministries and events. And while you're there, make sure to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Happening this week at our church. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all ready to go. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Why don't you uh, stand as we begin worship uh, right away? And I raise a hallelujah. 
in the presence of my enemies and I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief and I raise a hallelujah my weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me Oh, what can I say In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Cause death is defeated 
to hear is the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear praises, he hears faith. sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear worship, he hears faith. Away me in water I 
as deep as the sea. healing embrace peace like a river wash over me as I worship your majesty I worship your
up our voices in praise and we say hallelujah you tell us to bring our needs to you Lord but we know that we should also praise you for what you've done Lord there are so many of us here in this place today that have seen you heal we've seen you deliver we've seen you provide something supernaturally 
And we lift up our voices in praise for what you have done in those ways. But God, you continue to be faithful to us every day. The breath I just took to say these words deserves your honor and your praise. The strength it took me to walk up the stairs into this auditorium deserves honor and praise because you are the holder and sustainer of our life. Everything we have comes from you, Lord Jesus. And you deserve the glory and the honor and the praise, Lord Jesus. Even when we're going through the dark times, you are still the giver of life. You are the provider and the sustainer in, in those times. You hold us, Lord God, in the palm of your hand. There is nowhere, Lord God, that we go where we are out of your sight. Someone's here today and you feel like God doesn't see you. You feel like you're hiding around a corner and he doesn't see you. He sees you and that's not a bad thing. You wanted to hide from God and he's saying, just come here, let me give you my love. He deserves our honor, our glory, and our praise. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you for the cross. Praise you for the strength to live this in this world. Praise you for the hope that we have that we can share with our neighbors and our friends, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Help us to be thankful, people, that when we leave this place, we're not just revved up because we're in a worship service. Our minds aren't just, it's not just our minds stimulated by your word, but God, that we are thankful. We're reminded of how much we've been given, and we leave this place thankful. Be in the rest of this service, God, we pray. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Welcome to Broadway Church and thank you worship team for leading us in worship today. If you're new to Broadway, we encourage you to scan the QR code and fill out our digital in touch card. We'd love to stay connected with you as well as help you find a place at Broadway where you can serve and grow. We are now going to transition into our time of giving. If you're new to Broadway Church, please feel under no obligation to give. You do not have to pay to watch or attend church. However, if you would like to financially support what God is doing here at Broadway, we would love for you to do that now. Our preferred way of giving is for you to go to the Give tab on our website and check out the online banking giving option. We can accept your credit card over the phone if you call the church office. You can come in in person from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. during the week if you want to drop it off. You can also use text to give. If you text the word give to the number on the screen, it'll walk you through the prompts to get set up. Or finally, you can mail checks to the church. We'd like to encourage you to take some time after today's sermon to discuss what stood out or spoke to you the most, perhaps with some friends or family members. We wanna also help you by providing some discussion questions after the sermon, so stay tuned. Once again, Pastor Simon will share a great message with us in just a moment, but you still have time to hit the like button on this video as it really does help us reach many more people and share the good news of Jesus. Thank you once again for joining us today. Hi, Broadway Church. Uh, I wanted to give you a moment to meet two of our new global workers, Brian and KJ Appelt. Now you might be thinking, hey Paul, I thought you said global workers, but I recognize these guys. I, I think I sat next to them last week in church. Well, they attend Broadway Church and they are based in Vancouver, but their work is truly quite global. Guys, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, your ministries? I know you do different things. Brian, why don't you start? I work with a ministry called The Bible Effect, and that is a YWAM ministry that is out of here in Vancouver. So tell me a little bit about what Bible Effect does. Well. Our heart is to empower people all over the world to understand the Bible for themselves. Mm -hmm. So we create Bible resources that will accomplish that and then we give them away for free online through YouTube and, and then translate them into all kinds of languages. Awesome. KG, tell us a little bit about your ministry. I work with a ministry called Justice Water and our heart is to empower local communities to secure access to safe drinking water. So guys, the last two and a half years have been really difficult for everyone and I'm sure for you in your work here and working with people across the world. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the challenges and some maybe the victories of working uh, ministry uh, cross-culturally over the last couple of years. 
Well, we started the Bible Effect in August of 2019. Mm -hmm. So we were just, just in front of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And the fact that our team is already set up internationally, our animation team is actually in Germany. Okay. So we already knew how to function in a remote team. Mm -hmm. So when the pandemic hit, it didn't really affect our workflow. But what also happened is people remained inside in their homes and started studying the Bible more. So we were actually well positioned to, to offer our resources right when people were inside. So in that sense, it, it was okay. It actually worked out really well for, for the Bible mm -hmm. effect. KJ, your ministry is uh, very much on the ground in the countries you're in. Mm -hmm. How was that working over the last two and a half years? Tell us a little bit about that. So we have ministries in Cambodia and Togo, West Africa. And just this year, we launched a new location in Malawi. And for us, in some ways, uh, it hasn't changed because we have strong local-led uh, teams on the ground. So we still went and visited villages. We still drilled wells. We still provided water filters. Um, and so the biggest challenge was the fact that I couldn't travel to support my team and be there with my team. Um, but other than that, nothing really changed. We were able to continue on with our drilling projects, our water filter projects, and actually grow during this time. We also made sure that we were visiting the families and communities more regularly and supporting them in other areas of need as well, like food security um, and just maintenance and things like that. Awesome. Uh, I'd love to have an opportunity to pray for you guys, and I'd love for our church to be praying for you. How can we be praying for you guys in your ministries and in your life? Well, we wanna continue to reach more people and empower more people in the Bible. And that means getting further reach on YouTube and, mm -hmm. and the different platforms we're on, as well as into more languages. Mm -hmm. Right now we're in 12 languages and uh, we'd like to continue to grow and, uh, and then we also produce these videos with animation and that's not cheap. Mm -hmm. So we also uh, have constant fundraising mm -hmm. needs that we have as well. Yeah. KJ, how about you? Although we bring clean water to the communities, our ultimate goal in our heart is for people to know God. And so we would appreciate prayers in the areas that we have worked. We have thousands of families that have been blessed with a gift of clean drinking water. And I think it would be amazing if uh, people can pray for just those hearts to also know the goodness of God and the love of God. Well, why don't we uh, take a moment and pray right now. God, thank you for Brian and KJ. Thank you for their hearts to serve, their hearts of ministry. Thank you for the different ministries you've given them. One that is is in empowering people with the word of God. One that's, that's very tangible, giving a, that cold cup of water in Jesus name. Uh, and I just pray that both of these ministries would lead people towards knowing God deeper. And I pray that Brian and KJ would have every resource that they need, that you would continue to be their provider, that they would know you and trust you more in this season as they continue to lead, give them favor and blessing with those they lead in Jesus name, amen. If you wanna know more about Brian and KG or any of our global workers, you can go to bway.ca slash global outreach. Have you ever thought about how much time you actually spend doing things? Like how much of your time is spent on mundane tasks like sleeping or eating or, or even playing on your cell phone? Did you know that if you were to break down how the average person spends their life in years, you would get a chart that looked like this. Now, the average person spends about 26 years sleeping and seven years trying to fall asleep. Can you imagine trying to fall asleep for seven years? The average person spends 13 years at work and one year of unpaid overtime. They spend eight years and four months watching TV, three years on social media, four years and six months just eating glorious good food, 
<laughs> three years and one month on holiday and one year and four months exercising and one year and three days socializing. Now, we'll get back to this chart in just a moment, but I want you to think about just one stat that we just looked at. Lock that one stat in your mind, that one stat that stood out to you for some reason, and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna ask you about it in just a moment. Now, you might be thinking, like, why are we talking about all this, Simon? Well, all summer long, we've asked you, the church, to actually pick the topics that we're going to speak about. We're calling the series Yaffe, the You Asked For It series. And today's Yaffe topic is how do you stay passionate about God? How do you stay passionate about God? Now, passion is a powerful thing. John Wesley, a leader in the revivalist movement of the Church of England in the 1700s, he once said this about passion. He said, if I have 300 men who feared nothing but God, hated nothing but sin, and were determined to know nothing among men but Jesus Christ and him crucified, I would set the world on fire. Whew. See, John Wesley knew the incredible influence that passion creates. So when you think of passion, what do you think about? Who do you think about? See, we all know passionate people. Passionate people, they're inspiring. Passionate people, they love their craft or their cause. They, they seem single-minded, even relentless in their drive to see something accomplished. Passionate people, they are sold out. They are all in. They are unflappable. Passionate people, they, they invest their time, they invest their money on what drives them, and they stop at nothing. So what does the Bible have to say about passionate people? Well, in Numbers 14, 24, it says that Caleb followed God with passion. In 1 Kings chapter 8, 14, it says Solomon prayed with passion. In Job chapter 1, it says that Job hated evil with a passion. I could go on and on and on. In fact, all throughout Scripture, we find people that are passionate about God. So to answer the question, how do I stay passionate about God? I, I really, I struggled with this. I thought about just simply giving some practical advice about spending alone time with Jesus or, or listening to worship music or, or keeping a prayer journal or volunteering in the church. But I discovered when I did a deep dive into what some of the biblical authors had to say about passion, I was shocked. So today, if, if you're tempted to tune out this message because you think you know where all of this is going, you might be quite surprised as well. Also, at the end of today's message, I want to do something that we've never done here at Broadway Church before. So hang on, get ready, and just allow God to use these next 20 minutes to shape your life and to shape your passion. In the Bible, passion for God is known as spiritual fervor. Spiritual fervor means to exhibit enthusiasm, zeal, conviction, persistence, or belief, to show emotional warmth or passion, to glow, burn, or be very hot. I, I love that imagery of spiritual fervor, to be so hot that you begin to glow or even burn. So, how do we burn for God? How do we stay passionate about God? How do we keep our spiritual fervor? Listen to how the Apostle Paul instructs the early church in a letter he wrote to some of the first Christ followers in the ancient city of Rome. This is Romans chapter 12, verse 11. He says, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. In the New Living Translation, it says, never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. So, how do we stay passionate about God? How do we keep our spiritual fervor? Well, the Apostle Paul tells us to work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Okay, back to our life in years chart. Out of all the stats that we just read about, uh, which one stood out to you the most? Was it 26 years of your life spent sleeping? Or seven years of your life spent trying to fall asleep? I know that would hit me pretty hard. Was it four and a half years of eating? Or, or is it 13 years of your life spent working? Now, if I was a betting man, I would have bet a pretty penny that that working stat, that 13 years of your life spent working, would not have been too mind-blowing to anyone. Like, we get it, right? 
We all work a lot. Next to sleeping, the single most common activity we all engage in is work. We all know this to be true. Up to half of our waking hours on any given day could be spent at work. Work, it can even consume us in our leisure time. Work, it could be something that even consumes us while we're, we're, while we're sleeping. We could dream of work. As the modern day poet and philosopher Rihanna once said, all I do is work, 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 work. Yeah, all we do is work, 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 work. See, the Apostle Paul tells us, listen, if you're gonna keep up your spiritual fervor, if you're gonna keep up your passion for the Lord, then work hard. Romans 12, 11 says, never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Now, quick history lesson. During the medieval times, the church started to have hired clergy. This is paid priests and pastors to work in the church. And this started what was known as the sacred secular divide, meaning all the work that happened within the church was good and holy and, and sacred unto the Lord. But all that work that happened outside the church was lesser and dirty and secular. So priests and pastors, known as clergy, they were exalted and they were lifted onto this high pedestal for their work was holy. And then every other job or duty or activity became second best. So the highest calling upon someone's life was to work within the church and everything else was second rate. So for hundreds of years, the church had created this sacred secular divide and it still exists today. I was talking to a pastor friend of mine who was at family dinner just the other night and he told me that his mom was just going on and on about how noble his job was because he was a pastor and he was doing the Lord's work. If you still don't believe me, I've uh, listed here on the screen five jobs, lawyer, missionary, garbage truck driver, pastor, and stay-at-home parent. Now, out of these five jobs, I want you to just take a quick moment and mentally in your head, I want you to rank them in order of what job God likes best. What job God likes best. Put a one in your mind next to the job that God likes best and then a two by the next one, a three by the next one, and so on, so on and so forth until you've done all five. Have you done it? If the criteria is what job God likes best, I think it would be pretty hard to find people putting garbage truck driver above missionary, okay? Missionaries are like modern day martyrs. Surely, surely God must like their work best, right? Well, Unless you broke the rules to my little game here and you put a one in your mind next to each of those jobs, well then the sacred secular divide is very much alive and well today. See, regarding the sacred secular divide, the truth is, according to the Bible, there is nothing more spiritual or holy or better about working within the church than outside of it. As your outline says, according to the biblical worldview, there should be no sacred secular divide because all work is God's work. All work is God's work. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, it says, throw yourselves into the work of the master, confident that nothing you do for him is a waste of time or effort. All work is God's work. All work is God's work. Okay, you're thinking, Simon, remind me again why we're talking so much about work. Like, I, I come to church, I watch church online to get away from work, not talk about work some more. Well, today, I'm doing my best to answer the question, how do I stay passionate about God? And so far, we've learned that the Apostle Paul has connected our spiritual fervor to our work. And if we spend more of our waking hours at work than doing anything else, then yeah, this would make sense. If we're gonna stay passionate about God, we have to allow God into our work life. Our work life, where we spend most of our time. So as your outline says, how do we stay passionate about God? We must connect our work to God's work. We must connect our work to God's work. So whether you work with your hands for a living or you work with your mind for a living or perhaps both, 
You, you could be a teacher or a mechanic, a baker, an accountant. You could be a lawyer or a welder. You could be a stay-at-home parent, a designer, an engineer, a receptionist, a garbage truck driver, a doctor, an intern, a cook, an entrepreneur. You get the picture. Picture. You, you could be a photographer, okay? Whatever it is that you do for work, whether it be paid or unpaid, begin to connect your work to God's work. Now, you might be sitting watching, thinking and saying, Simon, this is all well and good, but brother, I don't work. Perhaps I'm retired or, or I'm a student or I'm a stay-at-home parent. I don't work. So let me just quickly say this to you. Being a stay-at-home parent is absolutely work. Work is not only done outside the home. Work is also done inside the home. Raising children, that's work. Doing domestic chores, that's work. And for those of you who are retired from an occupation and, and you're, no, you're no longer being paid to work, hear me, unpaid work is still work. You may be volunteering, that's work. You may be gardening, that's work. You may be helping raise grandkids, that's work. And if you're a student, don't think for a second that your studies aren't work, your assignments, your grades, that's all work. So whatever it is that you do for work, whether it be paid or unpaid, inside or outside the home, begin to connect your work to God's work. Begin to see your work as valuable in God's eyes. Begin to see your work as God's great call in your life. You have been sovereignly placed where you are for a reason in your work. And when you work, it is worship unto God. Begin to see your work as God's work. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 and 24, it says, Whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart, as if you are working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Amen. Let's begin to tear down this sacred secular divide and simply acknowledge that all work is God's work. There is no sacred secular divide. There is no second tier jobs in the kingdom of God. God has called some of us to be pastors and others of us to be garbage truck drivers. And no matter what it is that you do, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Amen? Amen. So how do we stay passionate about God? Well, we must connect our work to God's work. And secondly, we, we must invite God into our workplace. We must invite God into our workplace. Uh, again, I hope this isn't lost on you. Your workplace is where you spend most of your waking hours. So if you're gonna stay passionate about God, you need to invite him there. If your relationship with Jesus only happens on Sundays when you're at church, you're doing it wrong. Being in a vibrant person-to-person -person relationship with the God of the universe is not a one day a week activity. What you do the other six days actually matters to God. If, if you wanna keep up your spiritual fervor, then Jesus must come to work with you. Now, when I say that we must invite God into our workplaces, uh, you should know He's already there, okay? It's not like you're inviting him as if he's on the outside looking inside through a, a foggy window, like, like a puppy dog at the door whining, scratching to get in, get in from the door. See, we don't invite God in for his sake. We invite God in for our sake. By inviting God into our workplaces, we are simply acknowledging that he's already there at work even before we got there. By inviting God into our workplaces, we, we are acknowledging that his indwelling spirit is within us and around us all day long. By inviting God into our workplaces, we are acknowledging that God is sovereign over the mundane as well as the spectacular. By inviting God into our workplaces, we are acknowledging that we're not just looking for significant moments to happen at work, but we're looking for the significance in every moment. Last year, Pastor Lewis, he, he preached about this daily practice that he does that allows him to invite God into his workplace 
each and every day. He called it the liturgy of commute. Now it's called the liturgy of commute because he does this as he commutes to work. As he drives past certain landmarks on his way to work, it it triggers him to pray about certain things. It allows him to simply pause and, and be reminded that God is at work in his workplace even before he gets there. So, on Pastor Lewis's advice, I started to do this liturgy of commute on my own commute to work. I live in Surrey and I, I work in Vancouver, so every time I drive over the Portman Bridge, I am triggered to pray about this invisible bridge that connects our City Reach campus to our Broadway Church campus here in Vancouver. You see, the people that we serve at City Reach each and every day, our hope is that they end up connected to the people of Broadway Church. And we talk about this invisible bridge that connects these two campuses. And that's the invisible bridge that I pray about on my way to work as I cross the physical Portman Bridge. What it does, it it simply allows me to invite God into my workplace by acknowledging that he is sovereign over my daily work here at the church. You know how sports teams, they they rally together before the game and and they do a pregame prayer together in the locker room before they go out to play? Think of the liturgy of commute as as my pregame prayer before I get to work. Another friend of mine, he, he sells insurance. And before he begins every day, he sits at his desk And he simply says a prayer for his coworkers, a prayer for his boss, a prayer for his clients, and he invites God into his workplace. Author Eugene Peterson and and author of The Message, translation of the Bible, he, he goes on to say this. He says, I'm prepared to contend that the primary location for spiritual formation is the workplace. Not the church not the family, the primary location for spiritual formation is the workplace. You see, if we, if we don't invite God into our workplaces, if we don't connect our work to God's work, then we risk drifting away from God and losing our spiritual fervor and becoming Sunday-only Christians. It reminds me of the story of the elderly couple that, that used to sit next to each other on the, on the bench seat of his truck as they would drive down the road, cuddling with one another. Now, as the couple aged in their old age, they stopped this practice of cuddling next to each other on the bench seat of their truck as they drove down the road. And the wife turns to her husband from the passenger seat and says, what happened to us? And the husband simply replies, listen, I haven't moved. See, if you're finding yourself feeling like you've drifted away from God, remember, God hasn't moved. You have. So ask yourself right now, ask yourself, have I connected my work to God's work? Have I invited God into my workplace? Okay, and finally, let us see on your outline. How do we stay passionate about God? Well, if the Apostle Paul says that we must work hard It's gotta be more than just working hard. As your outline says, we must do good work. We must do good work. See, if we are connecting our work to God's work, seeing that our work is actually worship unto God, and and we've invited God into our workplaces, acknowledging that God is there even before we get there, then we must do good work as well. We we can't just mail it in or, or only give half effort. We are Christ's ambassadors in our workplaces. Not working for man, but working for the Lord. So our work should be our very best. And by doing this good work at work, we bring honor to God. Listen to what it says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 22 in the message. It says, Servants, do what you're told by your earthly masters. And don't just do the minimum that will get you by. Do your best. Work from the heart for your real master, for God, confident that you'll get paid in full when you come into your inheritance. Now keep in mind that your ultimate master that you're serving is Christ. The sullen servant, sullen means means gloomy or depressed or or unpassionate servant who, who does shoddy work will be held responsible. Being a follower of Jesus doesn't cover up bad work. 
See, as followers of Christ, we should be the best at our work. Not because we have some sense of superiority over others, but because we are working for our master, King Jesus. As followers of Christ, we should be known by the such great work that we are doing that employers are, are clamoring to hire us. Co-workers are excited to work alongside of us. Our direct reports are eager to be led by us. We're not to treat our work like it's only a means to an end, a means to get a paycheck so that we can get on with real ministry in the church. See, our work itself is the end, not just the means. Our work itself is God's work. Our work itself is God's ministry to the world. Now, this means that we're not just treating our workplaces like they're only a fishing pond for evangelism, although I do love evangelism. But this means that our first Christian witness at work is our good work. Now, this might sound like a new concept to so many people that might be watching this today because honestly, we, the church, we have not done a great job about teaching people about what they do at their workplace during the week actually matters to God. About 80 years ago, a Christian by the name of Dorothy Sayers, she wrote a now famous article called Why Work? And she wrote it to the church to encourage the church to connect people's work to their faith. And in this, article, in this article, she writes, and I just think this is absolutely profound, especially being written 80 years ago. She writes this, but isn't it astonishing? How can anyone remain interested in a religion which seems to have no concern with nine-tenths of his life? See what she's picking up on here? When she says nine-tenths of his life, what she's picking up on is the fact that we spend so much time at work. Okay, she actually says like nine-tenths of your life is spent at work. So no concern with nine-tenths of your life. The church's approach to an intelligent carpenter is usually confined to exhorting him not to be drunk and disorderly in his leisure hours or to come to church on Sundays. What the church should be telling him is this, that the very first demand that his religion makes upon him is that he should make good tables. Wow. Just wow. We can make good tables for his name's sake. She goes on to say that the only truly Christian work there is, is good work well done. You want to know how to stay passionate about God? Well, first, connect your work to God's work. Secondly, invite God into your workplace. And thirdly, do good work. Amen? Amen. Now, it'd be pretty hard to spend all this time talking about how we can stay passionate about God without mentioning God's passion for us. See, did you know that Jesus was passionate about you? Hebrews 12 tells us, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. See, Jesus was so passionate about you that he went to the cross on your behalf. Each year, we celebrate Passion Week, which is Palm Sunday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. And we remember that it was Jesus' great passion for us that held him to that cross. So maybe you're watching this today, and, and you didn't know that Jesus was passionate about you. You didn't know that, that Jesus died on a cross in your place to pay your moral debt, to make a way possible for you to be in a loving relationship with the God of the universe. Well, if that's you, today could be your day. You can simply accept his free gift of love and grace and forgiveness in your life. And today, you can start a real relationship with him. So if that's you, you can start to gear up right now because at the end of today's message, I'm simply gonna invite you to pray a prayer with me and ask Jesus to become the leader of your life and the forgiver of your sins from this day forward. But before we get to all of that, before we get to the end of this service, I want to do something that we've never done here at Broadway before. I want to do a commissioning. Now, oftentimes we do commissionings over missionaries before they go and journey to a far off distant land, or, or we do a commissioning to a, a young pastor who is being ordained, and, and we commission them, and we acknowledge God's obvious call in their life, and we, we ask God to bless them as they go and do the Lord's work. Well, today, 
This is exactly what we're gonna do, except you are who we will be commissioning. And your work is the Lord's work that you'll be doing. And your workplace is where we are sending you. So right now at home, if you so choose, I would like to commission you for God's work. So if you work, paid or unpaid, in the home or outside of it, I'd like to invite you right now, where you're sitting, watching the screen, to simply put your hands open like this. Put your hands open in a posture like you're ready to receive something. And I want to pray a prayer of commissioning over your life and your work right now. Pray with me. Lord, you see all of the open hands across all of the internet, across all of the people watching this right now. You see them exactly where they are and you see their hearts. Lord, right now we commission them to your service. Whatever it is they do for work, Lord, we acknowledge that you are there before they get there. And Lord, we commission them to do good work for your name's sake. Lord, go before them. Be in every conversation they have with coworkers or clients or, or family members or whatever it is, whatever they do. Lord, go before them. We acknowledge, Lord, that you are at work in these workplaces. And as we come and bring our best before you, God, our, our very best work to you, God, that you are gonna use it as your ministry to build your church, to build your kingdom, to build your um, people of God. So Lord, I commission my brothers and sisters unto your service, unto your holy work, whatever it is they do with their hands or their minds for a living. They are so commissioned. We pray these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you've been journeying along with us this entire time, and, and perhaps you're thinking to yourself, Simon, I don't know about being passionate about God. I, I don't even know if God is real in my life. I don't even know if I've, I, I even think that I can communicate with the God of the universe. Well, right now, maybe you've been gearing up for this, this entire message today, but I wanna close today's message simply by inviting you to pray a prayer with me, to ask Jesus, to be the leader of your life and the forgiver of your sins right now. So if you've been gearing up for that moment along with me right now, would you simply just take a quiet moment, wherever it is you're watching this, and pray along with me. You don't have to repeat these words after me. You can just simply pray along with me. Silently in your head, you can, you can pray this prayer. Make my words your words as we pray this in closing. Jesus, I, I acknowledge that my life has missed the mark. I acknowledge that I have been living a life not according to your design, but I've been trying to do my own thing my own way. And right now, Jesus, I simply acknowledge I'm coming back to you. Come forgive me of all of my past. Forgive me of all of my failures and shortcomings. Come live within me by your Holy Spirit and teach me what it means to live for you each and every day. Here and now, I accept your forgiveness. I, I accept your grace and your ultimate love in my life. Jesus, from this day forward, I will be known as a child of God. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, the best possible advice I could give you is to text the number on the screen right now. We have a pastor standing by and we would love to text with you and simply give you your best next step on a real relationship with the God of the universe. Well, thank you for being with us at Broadway today. As you go into your workplaces this week, know that God has gone before you. He's got your back and he has called you there to do good work. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much for joining us at Church Online this week. If you have any prayer needs or requests, please text the number on the screen. Or if you're new to Broadway and you're looking to connect deeper, you can email new at broadwaychurch.com and a pastor will reply and help you get connected to a place where you can best serve and grow. Now, as I mentioned earlier, here are some discussion questions based on today's sermon. Why do you think the sacred secular divide is still so prevalent in our culture today? When was the last time you thought about your work as worship to God? How would connecting your work to God's work change the way you spend your waking hours? 
What would it mean to you to integrate your faith and work? How would seeing your daily work as holy unto God make you more passionate about God? We pray that by engaging deeper with these questions, it will help you grow in your walk with God. And if you want more, join us for our Yaffe Talks midweek small group discussions or use the QR code for details. Lastly, don't forget to check out broadwaychurch.com for all the things going on at the church and have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Desiree and I am one of the pastors here. And as you guys can see, today we have a very special guest with us. So why don't you tell us who you are and what your job is around here? Hi, my name is Camila and I don't have a job here. I'm just a normal kid who comes here every Sunday, but I love to act, I love art, and I love building Lego. Wait a second, are you part of the kids camp that's gonna be happening this week at the church? Actually, yes I am, and we're all set to go. I have my camp shirt, and we're all asking for your prayers for our leaders and kids to keep them all safe during this big event. And also, if you happen to be free this week, we are looking for volunteers to help us, even if it's for just one day. If you happen to be free, you can talk to Pastor Megan. We have a ton of stuff happening here at Broadway for you and your family. So why don't you check these things out? We have now started our fundraising campaign for Back to School Blast. On August 20th, we will be providing 1,000 children, most coming from families who rely on our food hampers, with backpacks filled with school supplies. For years, we have relied on your generosity and your support, and this year, we are asking for your help again to donate. Cost is $30 per backpack, and you can sponsor one or sponsor more. There are a thousand children super excited for their backpacks, so can you help us make this possible? Please visit our website, cityreach.org slash back to school. And thanks to your generosity, we are at 22% of our fundraising goal. That means that 220 out of a thousand backpacks have been sponsored so far. Today's a great day to make a donation, if you haven't yet, to help us reach our goal. Our annual summer youth camp is back, and if you're in grades 8 to 12, you do not want to miss out on this year's ARC 1 youth camp. We will be getting away for the whole week, spending time in cabins, on the lake, playing games, winning prizes, we're going to have chapel services, and we're going to spend time around the fire, and so much more. The cost is $375, and you can register at the Automated Giving Center or online. If cost is an issue, please email nathanp at broadwaychurch.com. If you're in grades five to eight, we are so excited to invite you to preteen camp this year. Join us for a week full of fun, games, connecting with others, and three fun day trips to the Extreme Air Park, bowling, and laser tag. The cost is $100 and the camp is from July 18th to the 22nd, this upcoming week from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. each day. To register or for more details, you can go to bway.ca slash preteens. You Ask For It is our summer sermon series where we tackle your questions. But did you know that we offer a midweek small group to discuss our Yaffe message from that week? It's called Yaffe Talks. And if you're looking for a good coffee, good conversation with good friends, we would love to have you join us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. at the Vancouver campus in room 105, I'm gonna be there and you can sign up on our website and drop-ins are welcome. If you had made the decision to follow Jesus and have not taken the next step of being baptized in water, we would love to help you take this important next step. Our next baptisms will take place on Sunday, July 31st of all of our campuses. To sign up and for more information, check out our website or email us. If you miss anything that we said, you can visit our website, broadwaychurch.com, for more information on all of our ministries and events. And while you're there, make sure to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Happening this week at our church? <laughs> <laughs> and we're all ready to go. Oops.